Hey everyone, this week a jury decided that Donald Trump might be the first criminal to be voted in as president if he wins in November, or at least he would be the first politician to be voted in after they got caught. There's lots of examples, of course, of politicians who got away with it. As a basic example, Bill Clinton did exactly the same thing as Trump was accused of when he paid Paula Jones $850,000 to drop a sexual harassment lawsuit, and that is, of course, the tip of an exceedingly large Clinton iceberg. I say iceberg, but it's more like an island, really, you know, an island belonging to Jeffrey Epstein. There are also roughly 100 people who worked closely with Bill and Hillary who have since died from a quote suicide or accident. <clears throat> I also don't want to get too tinfoil hat on you, but nine of the police officers involved in the Anthony Weiner investigation all went on to suicide themselves afterwards. And if we're kicking around other names, remember when Dick Cheney shot that person or how George Bush's wife killed someone in the 60s? But anyway, let's talk about the Trump court case and why the result will probably be overturned on appeal. Number one, the judge overseeing the trial gave money to a pro-Biden political organization. And that's a pretty clear violation of New York law and judicial procedure. Number two, the crux of the case comes down to a quite obscure piece of logic, really, alleging that the falsification of business records was committed, quote, with intent to commit another crime. But then the prosecution refused in court to specify what that crime actually was, mainly the one where you have to tell the defence what the accusations actually are, unless this is a Franz Kafka novel we're living in. But number three, the jury supposedly was made up of 12 people who voted in the previous elections, or maybe they didn't. Yeah, they somehow all came to this with an open mind in New York. And if you look for the records, one of them actually claimed in the jury selection process they were a member of the social media site Trump Social. In fact, that was part of the claim, but the jury was a mix of both sides and therefore impartial. But I'll personally wager quite a large sum of money that at some point in the next 10 years, that person accidentally reveals it to have been a lie to get on the jury and winds up facing perjury charges. In America, of course, unlike in the UK, it's completely legal for jury members to discuss the trial afterwards and they're even allowed to write books about it or go on television. One of them will slip up, as often happens, and overturn the whole thing as a mistrial. And I'll put money on it, as I say. But I digress, none of this really matters, of course, and nor will it in this case for Trump. His poll ratings jumped 6% on the news of the guilty verdict, and he actually raised $39 million in one day, whilst Joe Biden showed up in Philadelphia to a rally attended by less than 100 people in what is supposedly a crucial swing state this November. It's a shame, really, because Biden's got lots of achievements to his name. You know, the standard of living for Ukrainian politicians is up nearly 100%, and more women of colour than ever are getting the chance to pilot the drones that attack children in Yemen and Syria. There was an interesting poll in the newspaper I saw that claimed that young American women don't want to date men who plan to vote for Trump, although unfortunately for them, the men who support Biden only want to date other men. Meanwhile, there was a case of a grocery store that did a President Trump sales promotion where it rolled back prices to what they were six years ago. So given the backdrop of the country and how pretty much everyone has already made up their mind how they're voting, the court case didn't gain the Democrats a single vote. And in a cruel twist for progressives, it probably cost them hundreds of thousands of votes as black and minority voters suddenly emphasised with the narrative that the judicial system was stacked and rigged from the start. One thing is for certain though, I guess, that Trump will not be going to jail this year. The appeals process will drag on to the next year at the very least. And that's if he doesn't get elected before then and then uses that mandate to pardon himself. Fun and games, I guess, and it certainly puts our UK system into perspective, especially the Scottish one. Hashtag Nicholas Sturgeon. Anyway, I've got a flight next Thursday and I'll be off on my summer holidays for June. I'll see everybody in July just in time for Britain's somewhat less exciting election. See you then. If you like these, click subscribe.